Good morning. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Today is the 11th Sunday after Pentecost, and the beautiful flowers on the altar were arranged by Marika and Doug Burt. Um, today in worship, Gregory and Tara Howe present their child, Connor Norman Howe, to the church for holy baptism, and so we celebrate with uh, Connor and his family that surrounds him with their love. We are also celebrating Holy Communion this morning. First Church of Christ is an open and affirming UCC church, which means you're welcome here no matter where you're from, no matter who you love, and no matter where you're at on your spiritual journey. You're welcome here also if you're here in person or online with us today. Uh, we're also an intergenerational church and place a high priority on children's and youth ministries. Uh, on the first Sunday of each month, we have communion and children stay with us in worship uh, stay with their families throughout the service. There are welcome cards in each of your pews uh, this morning, and you can fill those out uh, as a way of being more in touch with our church. Uh, if you include your email address, we can put you on our email newsletter, and that allows us to share upcoming information with you regularly. Lamentations 3.22 says, The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. Would you please stand for the call to worship? Welcome to all who have come in search of something. We have come to seek the living God. We are all welcome at this table. Come to be nourished by God's grace. Happy are those who find wisdom and receive mercy. In faith, in trust, and with hope, let us worship God. God, we thank you for this day. Thank you for each person here today, for the gift of your presence with us, and for the gift of the sacraments of both holy baptism and holy communion. We give you thanks for your presence and your grace that are conferred upon us in these sacraments. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Please uh, take a moment and greet one another by passing the peace. Peace be with you. And Dan. Good to be doing it together again. Absolutely. It's been a while. If you would please remain standing and join in singing our first hymn, number 351, I was there to hear your morning cry.
Today, Gregory and Tara Howe bring their son, Connor Norman Howe, to the church for the sacrament of baptism. We rejoice in God's promises to Connor and in this special day for him and his family. book of Acts chapter 2 verse 29 the Apostle Peter speaking by the Holy Spirit says the promises to you and to your children and to all who are far off everyone whom the Lord God calls to himself the sacrament of baptism is an outward sign of the grace of God it is a visible sign of an invisible event the reconciliation of God's people through the conferring of God's love and grace upon us Baptism is a sacrament through which we are united to Jesus Christ and given part in Christ's ministry of reconciliation. In baptism, God works in us the power of forgiveness, the renewal of the Holy Spirit, and an awareness of the call to be God's people always. Thus, within this context and the context of the Christian church at large, it is good and right that Connor be baptized here among us today and into God's grace and mercy. Hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, all authority in heaven on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always to the close of the age. Now obeying the word of God, and certain of his presence with us, we baptize those he calls to be his disciples. In so doing, we celebrate God's gift to us of this new life and the new life in Christ, which he freely offers every child of God. Jesus said, let the children come to me. Do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. Gregory and Tara, in presenting your child for baptism, you're affirming your faith in God's promises and are showing your desire for your child to become a follower of Jesus and a part of the church. Do you promise to teach the word of God, to love uh, him, pray for him, and help him in every way as God gives you opportunity so that he may become a true disciple? We do. And Garrett and Courtney, do you as godparents promise to pray for and support these parents and the vows they have made as well as to pray for and help this child to confess the Christian faith as his own? The Christian nurture of this child cannot be assumed by his parents and godparents alone since we are members of one another in the fellowship of the church. The responsibility of caring for this child must be shared by all of us. Do you as members of this congregation promise to do your part in caring for and supporting and praying for Connor as one of Christ's own, if so, say we do.
Let us pray. God Almighty, you have called us from death to new life through your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for this sacrament of your grace, for what it means to the church and to this child of your love. As we baptize with water, baptize with the Holy Spirit. Sanctify this water that this, that this child may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Glory to you, eternal God, the one who was and is and always will be, world without end. Amen. This is fun. Connor was one of the first babies born in our church that I got to visit in the hospital, too, which was great. Okay, here we go. Connor Norman Howe, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Okay. <laughs> hold on just a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're going to sing after we pray. Hold on. Hold on. So see what love God the Father has been given unto us that we should be called children of God. Oh. Let us pray. <laughs> he wanted to get back with mom. <laughs> God, we thank you for the Howe family, for uh, Connor's brothers, and, and for the support and love of all of family and friends gathered here today. God, help us all to be nourished by your love and your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have gifts to be presented and a sung response, if everybody would look in your bulletins. The scripture reading for this morning comes from the letter to the Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 1 through 16. In this reading, we hear a call to live with humility, gentleness, and patience. I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, 
making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness in deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. God is still speaking. We are still listening. How are you? Good to see you. Let's see what we got. Oh. Do you want to see what I got? A box of munchkins. And apparently those go downstairs after you like munchkins. So after church, after church, you can go downstairs and get lemonade and apparently munchkins as well. You like chocolate ones? Yeah. Those are good also, yeah. Okay, so, all right. So after church, we'll be able to have a few of those. But these are, are a blessing to everybody, right? Somebody thought of something that would right, bring smiles to our faces and help us feel happy, right? It's good when we think about other people. And when we do that, it's a gift, right? And part of being a part of a church is not just to think about ourselves, right? But to think about each other. And today is kind of a celebration, right? We celebrated the baptism of Connor, right? We got to celebrate that not only is God's grace on him, but it's also among all of us. And so apparently we get to celebrate with munchkins after worship. Isn't that a good idea? Can you be in charge of those for after worship? Good. Did somebody put that in there? <laughs> so, uh, good to see you. Can we say a prayer together? God, I thank you for your place in our lives and for the joy that fellowship and celebrations like baptism bring into our lives. Bless this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Are either of you guys here next week to bring the surprise back? Yes. Okay. So, James, you'll be in charge of the surprise bag next week. 
uh, go back with your parents or grandparents. Richard Rohr is one of my favorite spiritual writers um, of our day, and I first discovered his writing when I was at a library book sale. It was probably about 18 years ago in Kent, Connecticut, and they had a whole bunch of books out for sale, and I was just thumbing through them, and I stumbled across this book called Everything Belongs, The Gift of Contemplative Prayer. And on the back cover of this book, it says he was... He had written this book to help us pray better and to see life differently. He leads us beyond the techniques of prayer to a place where we can receive the gift of contemplation. In the first chapter, he distinguished between the center and the circumference of life. The center and the circumference of life. And he says we are circumference people. In other words, we spend our time in the circumference with little access, he says, to the center. He says we live on the boundaries of our own existence, confusing the edges with the essence, too quickly claiming the superficial rather than the substance. And then he says, in God's reign, everything belongs, even the broken and poor parts. He says those who rush to manufacture their own identity often end up with hardened and overlooked edges or overly defended edges, easily offended, and always out to create a new one when the last identity lets them down. Thus, many of us, even religious folks, settle for holier than thou or hatred of our enemies. These manufactured identities tend to be more related to the ego than the soul. Their identity is too insecure to allow any movement in or out, and their Christ tends to be very small, tribal, and just like them. Many people who claim to be Christians today seem to have little interest in paying attention to who Jesus actually was, his priorities and his values. For many, Christ is too big and too challenging for our lifestyles. Rohr says if prayer is not enticing you outside of your comfort zones, if your Christ is not occasionally a threat to your identity, you probably need to do some growing and learning. Then he says only when we live and see through God can everything belong. Spirituality, he says, is about seeing. It's not about earning or achieving. It's about relationship with, with God and others rather than about results or requirements. Once you see, he says, the rest follows. Spirituality is about seeing what is already there. The Apostle Paul talks about this as the mystery of Christ. And when he was writing his letter to the Ephesians, he was writing from prison. And he said, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you've been called. With all humility and gentleness and patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit of the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit and you are called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all and in all and through all. You see, the gift of God's grace is found in Christ Jesus. This is what baptism and Holy Communion remind us of. It's not about what we're doing or accomplishing, it's what God has accomplished for us in Christ Jesus. And this grace is not just for us and others like us, but it's for everyone. Even those who at first glance don't seem like us. 
You see, not only does everything belong, but everyone belongs inside the mystery of Christ. In verse 7, Paul says, but each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. He explains this in verses 11 through 13. He says, the gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. You see, spiritual maturity has to do with the way grace gives shape to our lives and our relationships. And we all have different gifts, different skills, different abilities and talents, and our relationships are required so that we can work together as one body to fulfill the mission that he's established for us. God's grace helps us to see life is not about us and it never has been. Even though we as human beings like to make it all about ourselves, the ego side of ourselves, not the soul. Paul confronts this in the final paragraph of this passage in verses 14 through 16. He says, we must no longer be children tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into he who is the head, into Christ, whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. I'm always blown away by the use of the word ligament here, because ligaments represent the relationships that exist between the different parts of the body. I remember when I was playing basketball as a high schooler and I would strain a ligament in my ankle. It was a painful thing and it made that part of my body not work the way it was supposed to. And so you had to take care of the ligament. And it's kind of like us in the body of Christ as we seek to work together. Sometimes relationships get strained. And we need to pay attention to caring for the ligaments, to caring for those relationships that allow us to work together and to thrive as a church. You see, when we pay attention to the ligaments, we allow God's grace to be shared through us and through the work of the ministries that we do together. I was struck today that we're celebrating both sacraments, the sacrament of baptism and the sacrament of Holy Communion. And there's one big difference between the two. Baptism, we only do once in our lives. It only has to happen once. And it's largely symbolic of the fact that God's grace is a gift that's eternal, that it ultimately connects us up with heaven. And then we're celebrating Holy Communion, which we do on a regular basis. Some churches actually do it every week. Our church does it once a month. But we do it on a regular basis to show not just that God's grace connects us to heaven eternally, but also that it comes into our lives while we're here on earth in a way that allows his grace to to get heaven into us, not just us into heaven. And when we partake of Holy Communion, we receive the gift of God's grace in a way that it reminds us that God wants heaven to be in us and in our relationships that we have with each other. Remember, there's one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all and in all and through all. This is is the mystery of Christ. Amen.
time of sharing joys and concerns, the deacons have microphones. If anyone has any prayer concerns or expressions of joy that you'd like to share. Pat. Hi, it's Pat Jorzak. Um, my husband's been in the soldier's home nine years, paralyzed, unable to move. And we've been very blessed. But he went in Thursday. Can you hold that closer to your mouth? He went in Thursday night, a very serious um, congestive heart failure, mm. COPD, pneumonia. Uh, doctor said, we may have a few months, we may have a few years. Um, so I'm very grateful for 56 years. He's 94, I'm 79. We've been lucky beyond belief for the fabulous, fabulous life. He's a fabulous husband in person. So I ask for your prayers, and I guess that's it. I'm just grateful for who he is in our life. Yeah, but he's not in good shape. Thank you. Is he at the he's hospital? He's at Bay State. He's, he's at, at Bay, Bay State. State now. Yeah. Yes. Crystal Hunter. Hello everyone. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Crystal Dunn. Um, Pat, my prayers are with you. You know that. Uh, since I've been blessed to be at this church, I've developed a pretty strong community that I'm very grateful for. And recently I've had a family member that has taken a fall. And sooner than I would have expected, I've come into a role of caregiver and healthcare proxy and there's a lot of information that has been presented to me and I'm just working on getting this lovely woman who has been in my life my entire life back into her home and it's it's been cumbersome um, so I don't normally speak but if I could that would be wonderful just to have some prayers um, while I am going through this um, this situation that I can handle, but it would be nice to have additional prayers as I go through this, because it's hard. So thank you very much. Thanks, Crystal. Somebody asked about her name, Crystal. Uh, Susan. Susan. Prayers, please, for my friend Ellen, who has lost her partner, Suzanne, of 25 years. I have known these people for 25 years, and Ellen is really struggling right now. Suzanne is at peace, though, after a tough fight with cancer, so thankful for that. And again, the person who passed was? Suzanne. Suzanne. Yeah, and Ellen is her partner. Let us pray together. Oh, we got one more. Oh, from, from online. our friends who are on Facebook, Mike Maloney asks that we please lift up all of those competing in the Olympic Games and their families and friends. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for this day and especially for the sacraments of baptism and communion. We continue to rejoice with the Howe family in the baptism of Connor. We also give thanks for the opportunity to worship you together. We give thanks for the, this community of faith and for the gift of your grace that it's built upon. We pray also for our loved ones. We know um, who are facing challenges related to health and relationships. If they are ill today, heal them. If they are grieving, comfort them. If they are hopeless, give them hope. We continue to pray for Stefan Platzer um, as he continues with his uh, cancer treatments. We pray for healing and strength and courage. We lift up Ann and Frank Smith's friend, the Reverend Doug Wheeler, a former leader in the Massachusetts Conference of the UCC who was recently diagnosed with pancreatic cancer 
and has begun an intensive chemotherapy regimen, and we pray for healing and help and strength. We lift up Pat's husband, uh, who is suffering from congestive heart failure and COPD and is hospitalized right now. We just pray and give thanks for their relationship, for uh, the great husband he's been, and for the place she, he holds in her life. And we especially lift him up to you and into your care at this time. Be a healing source of strength for him. We also lift up uh, two funerals that are taking place this coming week in the life of our church. We lift up Ann Manns and Richard Diefendorfer's services. We lift up all of their family and friends and these losses to you and pray over this time of grief for them. We lift up William Doc, Rev, or Dr. William Litch, a dentist who passed away from our community this week at the age of 101, his graveside services this afternoon. We pray over Crystal Dunn and her family member, Susan, who took a fall uh, for the role that Crystal now finds herself in as caregiver and health proxy. We just pray that you give her courage and strength especially as she gets her back into home. We lift up Cindy, who uh, lost her friend Ellen, and especially Suzanne, her partner, that they would be uh, comforted in this time of grief as well. And we lift up Mike's prayer request about uh, the, those competing in the Olympics and their family and loved ones and all who are gathered around them. May it be a uh, unique and blessed time for all of their lives. Help us always to rejoice with those who rejoice and to weep with those who weep and fellowship with one another. We pray these things in Jesus' name and we continue to pray as he has taught us to pray saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen it's now our sacred privilege to celebrate the sacrament of the lord's supper we practice an open form of communion in which all are welcome who hunger for God in their lives at this table. You're invited to come into fellowship with Christ and one another through this bread and this cup, regardless of your denominational affiliation. Um, please join me in the prayer of unison, which is printed in your bulletins. The prayer of confession, which we'll pray in unison. Holy God, we know that in so many ways, we have run from you. We have ignored your call. We have closed our eyes to your presence. We have disbelieved your mercy. We have disregarded your words. We have belittled ourselves. We have forsaken others. So we ask once again for your forgiveness. We ask you to stay with us as we turn away from what is wrong and hurtful and what is bright and life-giving. My friends, God is not done with us, not by a long shot. You are more beloved than you can ever know. And God is working in you and in the world beyond our wildest imagination. The beginning of all that is forgiveness. So know that you are indeed forgiven and at peace. Amen. Now hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ as they were delivered by the Apostle Paul. The Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he said, this is my body which is broken for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and he said, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of him. 
For as often as you eat this bread and drink from this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray. Gracious God, each time we approach this table, we are reminded that you are the giver of great gifts and that life loses its wonder and purpose without your gifts. May we receive this bread as a gift of the redemption of our lives and may we receive this cup as a gift for freedom from our fears. And may we receive your grace as a gift of light for our world's darkness. We give you thanks for these holy gifts and for the gift of this sacred meal. Bless and be known to us again through it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Invite the deacons for me. 1 Corinthians 10, 17 says, Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the bread together. So we'll come forward and receive the elements up here. You'll take the bread and the cup back to your seats, and then we'll partake of the elements together. And we'll start in the front and go to the back in terms of who lines up.
let us give thanks. God, we give you thanks for this sacred meal, for the grace that's conferred in our lives, and for the way your grace brings heaven into us and into our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Regarding announcements today, I just wanted to say that we'll have lemonade and cookies and apparently some munchkins downstairs after worship today. Uh, we're going to do it in Bailey Hall. It was like a 45% chance of rain throughout the day, so we figured it would be better there. Uh, this week we have two funerals. One is for Ann Mann on Thursday, and that's here in the sanctuary at 11 a.m. The other is for Richard Diefenderfer, and it's at the Longmeadow Cemetery on Saturday at 10 a.m. That's a graveside service. Please mark your calendars for kids camp or you can actually sign up online if you got the weekly newsletter or just call the church. That's for kindergarten through fifth grade and slightly older kids are welcome to participate in kids camp as uh, leaders in training, so to speak. Uh, so you're welcome to join us and can talk to Marilyn uh, Paul Lewis later next week if, if you're interested in finding out more about that. So it's August 19th through the 21st. It's three days, a Monday, a Tuesday, and a Wednesday. And it's from 9 a.m. till noon, or 11.45. So your kids or grandkids or neighbors or friends are welcome to join us. It's really a great opportunity for folks to connect with the church. And we had a lot of fun last year, so the kids had a really good time. Uh, so if anybody's interested, just let us know. Jesus said it is better to give than receive. Uh, this doesn't mean it's bad to receive, it just means it's better to give. Uh, so pl please respond to God's grace by bringing your tithes and offerings.
Good job, James. Please stand for the doxology. God, we give you thanks for these gifts. We give you thanks for the gifts you've given to us today, for the gift of young musicians, for the gift of our financial contributions. We give you thanks. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Please remain standing and join in singing our closing hymn number 386, The Church is One Foundation. We'll sing stanzas one, two, and four, so we'll skip number three. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.